Greetings, and welcome to another last day events as they are being fulfilled very rapidly. In this video, Amazing God Ministry will show you what is going on in our world, how the prophecies are being fulfilled very rapidly. We have been living in the agitation, which is the first stage of the Sunday Law. It is all around us. The stage has been set the foundation, for it has been laid, and we have been experiencing laws, that they are now using and will use even more, to enforce the Sunday Law Crisis, which is the final act in the drama. Welcome to Amazing God Ministry. Kindly include this ministry in your prayers. You can also support this ministry by subscribing and sharing this video and the Amazing God channel to everyone. Pray that we can continue to present the last day events in light of Bible prophecy amidst censorship. Stay tuned, friends. This video is about censorship, the silencing of free speech and more. board of directors announced it had agreed to sell the social media company to Elon Musk for about $44 billion. Musk, whose net worth of some $250 billion makes him far and away the wealthiest. Elon Musk is buying Twitter for an estimated $44 billion. Let's get right to CNN chief media correspondent Brian Stelter and CNN reporter Matt Egan. Um, okay, let's start with you, Matt. Uh, this wasn't going to happen. It was on. It was off. It was on, uh, off. Now what? <laughs> it's on. It's on. Uh, this means that the world's richest man is going to effectively control one of the most influential platforms in the Internet. Uh, this was weeks after Elon Musk you know, launched this hostile bid to try to acquire uh, Twitter. There was a lot of resistance. A lot of people were betting against it. Now the board has come out and they say that they've reached a deal. Uh, Elon's going to buy the company for $54.20 in cash. It values Twitter at about $44 billion. The deal's expected to close later this year. In a lot of ways, this is classic Elon Musk. I mean, everyone was skeptical that he could pull this off, that he's going to have the cash. Is he even being serious here? He is being serious, and, and now they have a deal. He's been uh, worth of some $250 billion, makes him far and away the wealthiest person on earth, says he intends to restore free speech to the platform. So what does it mean by that exactly? And why are so many people worried about it? NBC business and technology correspondent Joe Ling Kent has our Sunday focus. In typical Elon Musk fashion, it took off with a tweet. On April 14th, the richest person in the world posted this, I made an offer. More than two weeks later, and one so-called poison pill attempt by the board to thwart the sale, Twitter accepted. Twitter co-founder and ex-CEO Jack Dorsey endorsed his fellow billionaire, calling Musk the singular solution he trusts. If approved, Musk will take the company private, forking over $44 billion. And if the deal goes through, he would become the most indebted CEO in the U.S. However, the self-described free speech absolutist insists that owning Twitter, which now has 229 million daily users, is not about the cash flow. My strong intuitive sense is that uh, having a public platform that is maximally trusted um, and, 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 and broadly inclusive um, is extremely important to the future of civilization. But you've, um, you've described I, yourself. I, I don't care about the economics at all. Instead, his focus is on what he calls free speech, saying it's the bedrock of a functioning democracy and Twitter is the digital town square. Well, I think it's very important for uh, there to be an inclusive arena for free speech. He plans to add new features, making the algorithms open source to increase trust, defeating the spam bots and authenticating all humans. Having tweets sort of mysteriously be promoted and demoted with no insight into what's going on, I think this can be quite dangerous. But some of his critics see Musk as the danger, pointing to his controversial tweets about white nationalism, unions, taxes, and beyond, questioning his ability to properly handle disinformation and toxic content, especially if he takes the company private. Let's talk about the freedom of speech here. I mean, he says he's dedicated to freedom of speech. His critics say he's dedicated to allowing hate and violence to spread on the platforms. What's the reality here? 
I'm the reality only must knows. And I think when you look at Twitter platforms... Pope Francis had a meeting Friday with Apple CEO Tim Cook. Neither party has disclosed what was discussed. But afterward, the Pope spoke about technology and social media, calling modern forms of communicating a gift of God, according to Reuters. The Pope is admittedly a disaster when it comes to technology, but this is his second meeting in a week with a tech industry heavyweight. He sat down with former Google CEO Eric Schmidt last week. There is no word on whether Pope Francis was able to get the two tech giants to lay down their arms and come to terms over competing mobile phone platforms. Continuing his dialogue with leaders in the world of social media and technology, Pope Francis met with Facebook founder and CEO Mark Zuckerberg. Zuckerberg and his wife, Priscilla Chan, met the Pope on August 29th in the Domus Sancti Marthi, where the Pope lives. Throughout his papacy, the Pope has highlighted the importance of social networks as a means to facilitate relationships while warning of their ability to lead to further polarization and division if used incorrectly. Pope Francis said, The digital world is a public square, a meeting place where we can either encourage or demean one another, engage in a meaningful discussion or unfair attacks, the Pope wrote January 24 in his message marking the 50th World Communications Day. Pope Francis also met with Kevin Systrom, CEO and co-founder of Instagram, two weeks before the Vatican launched the Pope's Instagram account, Franciscus. Upon its launch, the account broke a new record for gaining over 1 million followers in 12 hours. The internet has been buzzing with reports of Elon Musk and his bid to take over Twitter. What is Elon Musk's real agenda for buying Twitter? Major tech companies are getting on board in the climate change issue, and they will ban on certain grounds. What is the specific gospel that must be spoken loudly before the second coming of Christ? He had made an offer to Twitter that they could not refuse paying a whopping $44 billion to buy Twitter. That's more than Twitter's market price. Why is Musk paying this kind of money? What does he want to do with Twitter? Answer, he wants to change and overhaul it. The president has long been concerned about the power of large social media platforms, what power they have over our everyday lives. Is the president concerned about the changes Musk bring to Twitter? CNBC.com says Elon Musk offered to buy Twitter so it can be transformed as private company. Why did Elon Musk buy Twitter? Musk wants to fundamentally change Twitter and not everyone is thrilled about the changes that he might bring. There are also speculations that China may get leveraged now, as per reports, Musk owns China's second biggest market in 2021. China rubbish reports that it could pressure Tesla to dictate Twitter content. Why should we care about what happens at Twitter? After all, it's not the world's most popular social network. It does not even make a lot of money. Twitter made around 5 billion from ads last year 2021. Compare that to Google $287 billion, Facebook makes about 117 billion over 20 times more than Twitter. So Elon Musk is not buying Twitter for its users or its earnings. He's buying Twitter for its powerful influence. And that's why you should care. The most powerful people are in Twitter like Barack Obama, Pope Francis, Joe Biden, Donald Trump and more medium top influencers, decision makers and policy makers are on this platform. World leaders are on Twitter, you could say Twitter is the town hall of world politics. So what Musk does with it could have far-reaching consequences. I invested in Twitter as I believe in its potential to be the platform for free speech around the globe. Forbes.com says major tech companies including Meta formerly Facebook, Google, Twitter, TikTok, Pinterest, and Reddit, were asked to adopt a shared definition of climate disinformation and misinformation to clamp down on content and ads that seeks to undermine facts about climate change. Twitter is the latest Silicon Valley giant to say it is banning advertisements that go against widely accepted research on climate change. Google.com says we must help build a more sustainable future for everyone. This is exactly what Pope Francis Laudato C. says on paragraph 14. I urgently appeal them for a new dialogue about how we are shaping the future of our planet. Whether they recognize it or not, these giant social media companies are on board with Pope Francis's Laudato Si action plan. Speaking against the mandatory Climate Sunday action plan on social media will soon be banned, contents that contradicts will be prohibited. When Twitter-friendly Pope met Apple boss Tim Cook, Francis said, digital technology and the internet could help bring people together but also had the potential to create the boons. Our words and actions should be such as to help us all escape the vicious circles of condemnation and vengeance which continue to ensnare individuals and nations, encouraging expressions of hatred. We also remember Pope Francis years ago, meeting with Mark Zuckerberg of Facebook, Washington Post says to further consider ways in which the Catholic Church can stretch its influence into our digital lives. 
It was part of the plan all along and we are living in its maturity when Sunday is enforced as the law of the land to combat climate change and God's faithful Sabbath-keeping people are protesting against the unbiblical Sunday worship by law, what will that be called? It will be called disinformation and even hate speech. It would also be called terrorism. Because your failure to go along with Sunday worship by law is causing more calamities. Twitter said it would consult information from authoritative sources such as reports from the United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, to determine which advertisements should be banned. Who is truly behind Real World Economic Forum and United Nations when it comes to climate change? Who is really pulling the strings in this ecological emergency? Answer. Rome is. Rome is telling the WEF what to do. You will see the Vatican staff official on climate change. And Pope Francis is representative at the World Economic Forum. Cardinal Peter Turkson is the director of the Vatican Dicastery for promoting integral human development. Pope Francis has been sending messages to Klaus Schwab, the CEO of World Economic Forum explaining the importance of Laudato Si and the role it can play in creating an integral ecology. The Pope is writing to the head of WEF, reminding him of his moral responsibility to seek an integral development based on Laudato Si. Express.com in UK says, I do think he, Pope Francis, is the ultimate world leader that within the circumstances has the skills and the vision to say things that transcend the old views and banalities. Revelation 13 verse 11, says, And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. He had two horns like a lamb and spoke like a dragon. How will the land beasts of Revelation 13 representing the United States of America, be the spokesperson for the papacy, the sea beast of Revelation 13, and ultimately, for Satan the dragon? free speech and freedom to preach. God's truth will be taken away in the final days. Satan wants to shut down the voice of God's people from proclaiming the three angels' message just like Abel and the Old Testament prophets, the martyrs of the Reformation. The devil wants to gag them to turn down the volume of the loud voice of the three angels' message so that many will be deceived and lost in end times. 1 Corinthians 1 verse 10, says, Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing and that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Jesus wants us to speak the truth in one mind and in one heart. What will be the specific gospel that must be spoken before the second coming of Jesus? Matthew 24, verse 37, But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Noah warned the people of the coming destruction of the world by water. In the same manner, Jesus would also have a specific gospel that will warn the people before the end of the world destruction not by water but by fire. Matthew 24, verse 14, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. What is this specific gospel that Jesus is referring to? Luke 8 verse 11. Now the parable is this, the seed is the word of God. So the word when preached brings about a fruit, just like a seed brings forth fruit. Jesus is pointing at a specific gospel and the fruit of preaching this gospel is the end of the world. Question. What is the end of the world? Jesus says in Matthew 13, verse 39, The enemy that sowed them is the devil, the harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. Is there a gospel that talks about harvest time? Yes, in Revelation 14 verse 15, And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, Thrust in thy sickle, and reap, for the time is come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. The specific gospel that Jesus is talking about in Matthew 24, Verse 14, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. It is the everlasting gospel of Revelation 14, verse 6, the everlasting gospel is a threefold warning. This is the first angel's message. Revelation 14 verse 6 and 7. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation, and kindred, and tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God, and give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment is come, and worship Him that made heaven, and earth, and the sea, and the fountains of waters. This is the second angel's message in verse 8. And there followed another angel, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. The third angel's message in Revelation 14 verses 9 to 11. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, if any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead, or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation.
and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels, and in the presence of the Lamb, and the smoke of their torment ascendeth up for ever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night, who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. But Satan, the great counterfeiter, will have also his version of one mind and one heart, speaking lies. The kings of the world, meaning the powerful people in position will yield to the authority of the papacy. They will support him in his act to save the world by climate Sunday, before enforcing the mark of the beast. Revelation 17, verse 13 and 14. These have one mind, and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. Verse 14, These shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them. For he is Lord of lords, and King of kings, and they that are with him are called, and chosen, and faithful. We see the unfolding of prophecy now, in the issue of climate change, Green Sunday, Climate Sunday, that promotes earth worship, and the main objective is the worship of the sun. Satan will stop the dangerous message from going viral in social medias, just like in the time of Martin Luther, the economist says, social media in the 16th century. How Luther went viral. Five centuries before Facebook, social media helped bring about the Reformation. The protesters' message spreads virally through social networks, making it possible to suppress and highlighting the extent of public support for revolution. CNN Business says Elon Musk wants to authenticate all real humans on Twitter. For example, Musk could seek to require real name on accounts, or perhaps he may allow to continue pseudonyms but require photo identification or integration with third-party services where users are already known. Could this lead to more restriction on free speech and preach? Could this lead to extensive banning and discrimination? Obama taking on a major problem we all face, disinformation. Today, he gave a speech at Stanford University near Silicon Valley. He says lies and conspiracy theories on social media have weakened democracy. He also suggests that disinformation will get worse because of new technology. If we do nothing, I'm convinced the trends that we're seeing will get worse. With the emergence of AI, disinformation will grow more sophisticated. But Mr. Obama says there's still hope, and he even offered some solutions. CNBC's Eamon Javers was at Stanford University for the former president's speech. Hi, Eamon. You know, Tyler, during his two terms as president of the United States, Barack Obama was a darling of Silicon Valley. He regularly met with the top technology executives, and he raked in campaign contributions from technology company employees. But today, the 44th president of the United States came here to deliver a message of criticism, saying that social media is corroding democracy and urging the tech companies to do the right thing. Thank you, everybody. All we see is a constant feed of content where... Useful, factual information, and happy diversions, and cat videos, <laughs> flow alongside lies, conspiracy theories, junk science, quackery, and over time we lose our capacity to distinguish between fact, opinion, and wholesale fiction. Obama called for regulation of the technology companies, saying that the First Amendment is a, a check on state power and doesn't apply to technology companies. Decisions like this shouldn't be left solely to private interests. Obama said the social media companies should disclose what's in the algorithms that control how fast information spreads, even if they do that secretly to government regulators. And the former aides to the former president told me today that he was just laying down broad principles here for how all this should play out. And he was deliberately vague about exactly who would do all this regulating and who would be in charge of that process. So that debate is going to take place in a Washington, D.C. that is much more divided and much more partisan than it was even when Barack Obama was president. Former President Barack Obama criticizes social media companies for contributing to polarization through design choices on their platforms. The very design of these platforms seems to be tilting, tilting us in the wrong direction. Then he says, Congress should consider reforms to Section 230 and tech firms should be required to have a higher standard of care when it comes to advertising on their site. In other words, no more free speech. In other words, this country, the United States of America, which came up as a lamb with two horns is now indeed speaking as a dragon. This country with the two horns, republicanism and protestantism. A country without a king. A church without a pope, is indeed now speaking as a dragon as Revelation 13 verse 12 says, and he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, 
and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. How will he do that? It must get rid of its constitution, which by the way, First Amendment speaks of freedom of the press, freedom of speech. While they are telling you that this is misinformation, the Great Reset Agenda is not about censoring free speech on the internet. Meanwhile, that's exactly what they are doing. Notice the next one here. This is from the White House website. This says, launch of the Declaration for the Future of the Internet. In other words, as we were told the United States of America, speaking as a dragon, also is repudiating every principle of its constitution that made it a free nation, contrary to the social teaching of Rome. Now, he, the United States of America, has adapted the social teachings of Rome which is communism, censorship. Listen now next article goes on to tell us White House NSA organizes security summit with 50 nation peers to discuss future of the internet. That would be 50 nation intelligence ministers getting together to decide what they will permit on the internet. Knit us the words, to decide what they will permit on the internet. Apparently, a collective partner rule book is forthcoming. Big Tech will be given specific instruction on how to comply the global rule book on how to handle, define and eliminate this information, misinformation and amount of information on the worldwide internet. As they are declaring this right now openly, soon and very soon, we will not be able to use the internet. This is why we have to go back to the blueprint that God has given. The work will be done, will be finished through sacrifices, by going door to door and also by having our own facilities. Medical missionary work. And as we can see, the Pope indeed has the whole world under its umbrella to censor the Bible itself, to censor the love of Christ message. Friends, brothers and sisters, we remember during the Dark Ages, it was free speech, it was the press, the printing of material, the printing of the Bible that really sucked the Pope of Rome. Listen to what we will hear from Great Controversy 246 paragraph 3. It was not long after that. A learned Catholic doctor engaging in controversy with Tyndall makes claim, it were better for us to be without gods. Then without the Pope, and that's why they want to control what you put on the internet, because they want to exalt their laws above the laws of God. They do not want you to know about what a thou sayest the Lord is. It goes on to say, Tyndale replied, I defied the Pope and all his laws and if God spare my life, ere many years, I will cause a boy who drive the plow to know more of the scriptures than you do. The purpose which he had begun to cherish of giving to the people the New Testament scriptures in their own language. Was not confirmed. And Tyndale immediately applied himself to the work. Driven from his home by prosecution. He went to London and there, for a time pursued his labors undisturbed. But again, the violence of the papacy forced him to flee all England, seem close against him. And he resolved to seek shelter in Germany. Here. He began the printing of the English New Testament, notice the word the printing, the press there, twice the work was stopped but when forbidden to print in one city, he went to another. And as Jesus says in Matthew 10 verse 23, But when they persecute you in this city, flee ye into another, for verily I say unto you, ye shall not have gone over the cities of Israel, till the Son of Man be. Indeed, as we are using our means and talents to spread the gospel far and wide and make sacrifices according to what Jesus says in Matthew chapter 24. The end indeed will come. Now let's fast forward. Then this says now, from the verge on April 28, 2022. The EU, US and 32 other countries just announced a declaration for the future of the internet. That lays out priorities for open, free, global and interoperable, reliable and secure internet. It highlights goals like affordability, net neutrality, and remove illegal content, without curtailing free expression. Although it offers few specifics for achieving them. While they are telling you, there will be no more such a thing as free speech. But at the same time, they are telling you that it will be an open, free internet, as long as you are not preaching against the beast, as long as you are only speaking about the things that they want you to talk about, as long as it will be about their narrative. But friends, brothers and sisters God has given us a different narrative. And this narrative has everything to do with salvation, with saving souls that are dying in their ignorance. This is a time we must have the boldness again of Paul and the Apostle and we must say to the world that we are not ashamed of the Gospel of Jesus Christ. And like Paul and Silas, we must continue to preach until they throw us in prison. Even there, they will not be able to stop it. Brothers and sisters, what we see taking place right now is the Sunday Law Movement. Those are the Sunday Laws that will enforce the actual Sunday Law which calls for worship, which is the abomination of the Pope of Rome. But at the same time, what they, what's the counterfeit? What's the seduction here? What is this deceptiveness here that we see going on? What is the real agenda? That is, to receive the mark of the beast. And then you can have a day of rest, deception, deception, deception. In these last days, 
the commandments of men versus the commandments of God. As the spirit of prophecy says, God's servants cannot unite with them. Nothing can justify them in setting aside the commandments of God, for the precepts of men. At such a time as this, we must be reminded of what Jesus says in John 14 verse 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. In other words, Jesus was saying, if you love me, honor me. If you love me, vindicate my character. Regardless of the bans, of all the internet, free speech, regardless of what the papacy is doing right now. We must remember that the gospel of Jesus Christ will never be received by the majority. The gospel of Jesus Christ will always be in the minority. But we must also remember, at such a time as this, we have been called to make a covenant with God, what kind of covenant? It is a covenant through sacrifices, sacrifices have to be made in order, as the Bible says, to be holy, as your heavenly Father is holy, to be perfect, as God Himself is perfect. Friends, brothers and sisters, be sure that you will proclaim the gospel of Jesus with a loud voice, with a free speech, to tell about the coming Savior Jesus. Kindly share this video and subscribe to this channel. Thank you, friends, stay faithful. And may we all continue to seek truth from the Bible. Let's have a word of prayer. Loving Father God, which art in heaven. You have allowed many things to come our ways, to test us, to see what manner of people that we must be in these last days. You are perfecting a piece of people, purifying a people, that will stand up for you in these last days, that will reflect the glory, the holiness of Jesus Christ, the faith of Jesus Christ. And that is part of the reasons why we are seeing the final fulfillment being fulfilled so rapidly because indeed, the time is at hand. To help us now, Lord, to be ready to meet this enemy on this battlefield, and put on the whole armor of God, and to stand. And then we're going to see the salvation of the Lord. Forgive us Lord of all our sins, we pray in Jesus' name, Amen. Kindly type in the comment section, Fear God and sing His praises.